Next on Current News, China is retaliating tonight, unveiling tariffs of $75 billion worth of U.S. goods. If the Amazon suffers, the whole world suffers. That's the message from Latin American bishops raising their voices to save the planet's lungs. Militant herdsmen are terrorizing a Nigerian bishop's flock, and the government isn't doing anything to stop them. We have the exclusive. Plus, a metal-eating bacteria is chipping away at the most famous sunken luxury ocean liner. Could the Titanic disappear? The news starts right now. Good evening, I'm Michelle Powers. A new shot at the United States tonight as the trade war with China intensifies. Beijing is slapping big billion dollar tariffs on key American products. President Trump is fighting back. Camilla Bernal reports the very latest from Washington. The message coming from Beijing is that China is ready to stand toe to toe with the U.S. On Friday, they announced a new round of tariffs on $75 billion worth of U.S. goods. My reaction to this is when China reacts like this, what they simply do is strengthen the resolve of this president. The new tariffs come as retaliation after the U.S. announced it would impose 10 percent tariffs on Chinese imports worth $300 billion. Frankly, nobody's winning. But I also frankly think the U.S. is losing even more than is China. The Chinese tariffs will phase in. The first round, effective September 1st, includes a 10 percent tariff on goods like seafood, beef, chicken, wheat, soybeans and steel. A 5 percent tariff will be imposed on cream, turkey and chemicals. Then on December 15, 10 percent tariffs will be imposed on goods like coffee, corn, motorcycles. And a 5 percent tariff will include whiskey, cigars, clothing, TVs, lights, automobile parts and pens. China also plans to resume a 25 percent tariff on American cars. This trade war and these tariffs are going to decrease economic growth. President Trump firing off multiple tweets saying the U.S. does not need China and then encouraged companies to make goods in the U.S. In Washington, Camila Bernal, Currents News. The world economy will be front and center this weekend. The president is heading off to France for the G7 summit of world leaders. The meetings are expected to be tense. The heads of state arriving at the summit are demanding action tonight to combat the Amazon fires, calling the disaster an urgent international crisis. The blazes are spreading from Brazil into neighboring Bolivia. The flames engulfing the so-called lungs of the world are record-breaking. Critics claim Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro's deforestation policies are the root cause. He's blaming environmentalists. The smoke coming from the Amazon is so dense it blotted out the sun over Sao Paulo, Brazil, most popular city, located some 1,600 miles away. The bishops of Latin America and the Caribbean are sounding alarms, saying they want to raise our concern over the gravity of this tragedy that not only has a local or a regional impact, but of planetary proportions. If the Amazon suffers, the whole world suffers. Pope Francis has also scheduled an international summit on the Amazon for October. Breaking news from the Supreme Court tonight announcing this afternoon the Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg has just completed three weeks of cancer radiation treatment. The therapy started on August 5th after a cancerous tumor was discovered on her pancreas. The medical procedure was done at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York on an outpatient basis. Doctors say that she tolerated the treatment well, and there's no evidence of the disease elsewhere in the body. The 86-year-old Justice has battled cancer in various forms over the last two decades. The crisis of migrants stranded at sea is not over tonight. A rescue ship with more than 300 people on board is stuck in the Mediterranean. Italy won't let them dock. About a third of the refugees are children. Another rescue ship, the Open Arms, was allowed to make port at Lampedusa earlier this week, but only after Italian courts overruled the government. Back at home, the U.S. bishops are telling the Trump administration to back off its new rule that could detain undocumented migrant families indefinitely, labeling it inhumane. Speaking for the entire conference, Bishop Joe Vasquez is saying, 
Countless children will be harmed by this new rule, and this is simply unacceptable. It is an attempt by the administration to circumvent existing obligations and undermine critical protections for these children. New reports out tonight that are coming as a warning to the United States. Don't expect this hurricane season to stay slow. Experts are predicting an uptick in storms before the season ends. As even New Yorkers know well, the months of September and October have brought some of the most powerful and damaging hurricanes to the states. Nadia Romero is in Fairfax, Virginia, touring a Red Cross facility where new technology may be able to save lives. Hurricane Michael killed 59 people in the U.S. last year. During disasters like this, seconds matter. Emergency response teams need to act quickly, and technology helps them. Red Cross Disaster Operations Vice President Brad Kaiserman says the organization is moving away from making gut decisions on how to spread resources. He understood following Katrina and Sandy um, the importance of leveraging technologies that were evolving but hadn't necessarily been applied to emergency management and response. Now the Red Cross uses RC View, a multi-layered computer system that dissects a disaster. It collects critical data from federal, state and local agencies and even social media. It's all about the science of where, where is something happening, where is their need, where are the resources, bring them together and suddenly people aren't suffering anymore. Color coded letters and numbers all show Red Cross resources, damaged properties and need, especially in a hurricane. Show me where we would see that hurricane coming in and, and how this map would change. We'll begin to see development here in the Gulf of Mexico where storms often intensify rapidly. But before that happens, Kaiserman says to download the Red Cross emergency app where you can get weather updates, safety tips and information about shelters and feeding stations near you before and during the storm. And while we haven't had a major hurricane yet this season, experts warn more dangerous storms could be coming soon. You've got to prepare. You've got to have a plan with your family and your neighbors and your colleagues. At the Red Cross National Disaster Operations Coordination Center in Fairfax, Virginia, Nadia Romero, Currents News. There's growing outrage in southern Nigeria as deadly clashes between religious and ethnic groups threaten to disrupt the fragile unity there. In an exclusive interview with Current News, Nigerian Auxiliary Bishop Ernest Abodo is speaking out about the atrocities committed against Christian communities all over the country and how they have plans of fighting back. Violence is on the rise in Nigeria as abuses by militant groups like Boko Haram and the Fulani herdsmen continue to plague Africa's largest economy, making it one of the continent's poorest nations, something Auxiliary Bishop Ernest Abodo is battling to overcome. The greatest uh, challenge that we have is security of lives and properties. People are no longer f uh, safe and they feel very unsafe. Obodo serves the Diocese of Anugu in southeast Nigeria with 1.3 million Catholics. Many of them are afraid of the escalating religious persecution. The activities are known to the people because they move about, they come to a village, especially Christian villages, they kill people and they escape. Nobody is apprehended. While Boko Haram's terrorist activity is known throughout the world, in southern Nigeria, where Christians are in the majority, there's an emerging threat. Hordes of nomadic cattle herders from the mostly Muslim Fulani ethnic group are ramping up attacks against Christians. And Bishop Abodo says no one is exempt. This is a picture of my priest, a 49-year-old priest, Father Paul Orfo. He was gone down by a suspected Fulani headsman. He was just going for a mass, and people came from the bush and shot sporadically at his car. He managed to continue, and after some time, he, his car couldn't move again. He got up, got out to run into the bush, and they followed him and killed him on the, on the spot. Bishop Abodo blames the inaction of the government and widespread corruption for the skyrocketing violence. According to Open Doors, a group that tracks violence against Christians in over 70 countries, there have been 9,000 to 11 and a half thousand Christians killed between 2006 and 2014, and more than 13,000 churches destroyed in northern Nigeria alone. Now the church in Nigeria is urging the faithful to act, demanding action from their political leaders, 
but also taking security into their own hands. Every uh, parish is secured by its own people because the government is doing more or, m more or less in helping the situation. So we are saying we must constitute security for ourselves. And as Bishop Obodo prays for a peaceful Nigeria, he continues the fight unafraid and full of hope. I am not afraid because I have faith, faith in God, and this faith propels me. Father Paul Ofu was laid to rest on Tuesday after a funeral mass at Holy Ghost Cathedral in Anugu. He was only 49 years old. Those responsible for his tragic death are still at large. News tonight about the world's most ill-fated ship. The Titanic is being devoured by metal-eating bacteria. The outlook is grim. Large parts of what once was a luxury ocean liner have now been lost. Prominent features such as the captain's bathtub, the deck house, and many staterooms are being returned to nature. Scientists say the Titanic is disappearing and estimates it could be gone completely within 20 years. There's a lot more news coming your way. We're taking a look back at some of the best stories of the summer. Let's call it your Sunday best. Mass and flip-flops on the shoreline. It's making a big impact in one Queens parish. Nearly five months after the world's most famous cathedral went up in flames, experts are finding out that Notre Dame's survival was a close call. And could it be a miracle? Something otherworldly is happening in Canada. Streams of liquid are flowing from an image of the Virgin Mary. Do you have a story idea or want to share a tip? Email us at newstips at thesalesmedia.org or call our 24-hour number, 718-517-3122. We'll be right back. Summertime is often a lean time for many parishes. Catholics are away from home, on vacation, but there's a church in Queens that thrives in the heat. We're taking a look back at Tim Harfman's report on St. Francis de Sales Church, where faith meets the shoreline. Parishioners of St. Francis de Sales Church love summertime masses, especially when the celebration is conducted on the sands at Rockaway Beach. St. Francis is truly the center of Rockaway you know, especially here for the parish. Father Bill Sweeney is the pastor of the Bell Harbor Queens Church, and he believes the beach masses are great for connecting with parishioners. It's a wonderful way of bringing people together, celebrating in a, a special way on, on a Sunday, and the crowds love it. At a time when summer vacations cut into attendance and donations at other parishes, St. Francis de Sales is thriving on the shore and in the church. People work out their schedule depending on whether they're going to the beach or not. With the church bringing the liturgy to the water's edge, the Sunday collections at St. Francis de Sales have remained steady throughout the summer, averaging $10,000. Another big help with contributions, according to Father Sweeney, is online donations. That way parishioners who are on vacation can keep on giving. We have a lot of people using that, you know, try to keep up with the times. As for worshiping God on the beach, parishioner Lorraine Agolia explained on Sunday what she appreciated most. My daughter, who's 15, she was even saying, wow, how cool is it that our whole neighborhood, you know, where everybody's going right now with their beach chairs as they're walking down the street. There's something else the St. Francis de Sales community is doing to keep the summer hot. Over a thousand kids are playing hoops in the church's annual Summer Classic Basketball Tournament. Keith Goldberg is the man behind the games. Having the Summer Classic keeps everybody connected to the church during the summer because they, they, on Sunday they go to Mass, Monday through Friday they're here in the schoolyard watching the games. Combining the blacktop, the sun, and the surf, is proving to be a perfect way for evangelizing and growing the Catholic faith. It's the generations that have lived in this community over all these years, you know, through these years, who know how special it is. Like I'm hoping my kids know and realize, and that they're going to take it over one day. In Bell Harbor, Queens, Tim Harfman, Currents News. Notre Dame survived a massive fire months ago, but the beloved Paris Cathedral is facing a new threat this summer: the heat. 
High temperatures bearing down on Europe all season long have been a threat to the ailing building. In fact, new reports are revealing that the iconic house of worship was far closer to collapsing that fateful day than people originally thought. Tim Horfman has that story. What looked like a scene from a movie was a horrific reality in France. The Notre Dame Cathedral up in flames just days before Easter left Parisians and tourists alike in shock watching the 850 year old church crumble. I, I just can't believe it. It's, it's just a, a whole part that's just missing. Now three months after the disaster, the New York Times is uncovering just how close the cathedral came to collapsing entirely. According to the report, the employee monitoring the alarm system had been on the job just three days and was working a double shift. He was responsible for watching 160 alarms. When the emergency alert for the fire first came across, the employee notified a guard but the guard went to the wrong location. According to the Times, it's unclear how much of the special alert the new employee even understood or conveyed to the guard. By the time the fire department was called, it had been 30 minutes since the first alarm went off. Officials said the blaze broke out in the attic, where there weren't any sprinklers or firewalls to preserve the architecture. <laughs> Nearly 50 firefighters pushed through the northern tower of the medieval structure but they were ordered to evacuate, fearing the tower would collapse, taking the rest of the cathedral with it. Firefighters then climbed the southern tower instead and set up a platform between them. But the damage was done, leaving a gaping hole in the roof and a gaping hole in people's hearts. To see it go up like that, it's pretty devastating. According to the report, officials have yet to pinpoint the cause of the fire but do know it wasn't criminal. They pledged to rebuild the historic cathedral. Tim Harfman, Currents News. Currents News was on the ground in Paris the days after the fire. While plans to rebuild Notre Dame are currently underway, one artist on the side of the River Seine said he may never again paint the cathedral's portrait. Since the fire, his artwork has become a type of visual tribute on canvas with the power to move people to tears. Bonjour, comment allez-vous? Au revoir, il est dingue. Bonjour les filles, comment allez-vous? He may sound like a native to the City of Lights, but it was only 15 years ago Rick Adam first dipped his brushes in France. Back in the day, I used to, I used to hang or uh, frequent, you know, uh, Chelsea and Soho, and my friends would say, you know, Rick, you, you need to go to Europe. It was there Rick met his muse, his mademoiselle, a so-called old lady, the subject of hundreds of his paintings. The flying buttresses here, you know, you have the, the spire. The Notre the Dame de Paris. The stained glass in here in the center and whatnot. But unlike most tourists who take photos of the famous towers, when Rick puts his brush to canvas, it's from a different vantage point. The front is just not as dramatic as the rear or the, the back. You have the flying buttresses. You have a good view of the spire, you have good reflection. But a back that will never look the same again. This painting, one of his last strokes before the smoke. No longer a reality, but a memory. Exactly as you said. Since the fire, they've become visual tributes on canvas. Chateau de Béa. With the power to move people to tears. It's just one of the most beautiful things in Paris. Nancy Hennig choosing one with the spire she watched fall before her eyes. They say they're going to rebuild this. But to me, it's going to be like a Disneyland Notre Dame. Yeah. You can't rebuild 850 years. It started, it started in here. Rick says his artwork has been selling fast since the disaster. But I just can't keep up. I mean, when I make them, people buy them automatically. Yeah. Explain to him uh, about what's the roof. Sometimes using them as teaching tools to those too young uh, yes, to realize like just what the world has lost. I try to mix a little bit about the history of the cathedral and the history uh, about Jesus. As for this one, it's had many offers. And people saying they're going to the bank. I've refused them. So yeah, that has went up significantly. But thank you for visiting. Yeah. He's just not ready we'll to say au revoir. The Holy Father recently sent a blessing for the reconstruction efforts. He told Catholics that in their work to restore the famous church, they could become builders of a new humanity rooted in Jesus Christ. Francis is also praying for the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary to guide the reconstruction of one of the world's most beloved cathedrals. 
Still to come on this special edition of Currents News, a story of hope 75 years in the making. His hands have held military medals from the Second World War, but now they finally hold a high school diploma. We have the story of one American hero and the achievement of his life. Parishioners at a church in Canada are witnessing an unusual occurrence and they're calling it a miracle. Streams of liquid are coming from an image of the Virgin Mary. Looking at his diploma, he just kept saying he never thought he would really graduate high school. Instead of finishing his education, Margaret Quinn Livin says her father Joe dropped out of school. It was 1942 and World War II was raging. So instead of moving the tassel on his high school graduation cap, he put on a steel helmet and defended our country. Now this Catholic American hero is getting what he always wanted. Emily Druby has a story. In Joseph Quinn Livin's Brooklyn home sits a plaque that reads freedom is not free. It's something the World War II vet understands well. It's a good, great country and you should save it. At just 16 years old, Joe left high school to help his family get through the Great Depression. Two years later, in 1944, he enlisted in the Navy. Where I lived, everybody, everybody went into the service. He was stationed in the Pacific. Well, a couple of air raids, but uh, the planes got stopped before they uh, reached where we were. During the two years he spent fighting for his country, Joe was awarded many medals for bravery, but there's one recognition he never received, a high school diploma. My father worked very hard his whole life. Any overtime he could get to provide us with what we needed. And it was hard for him because he didn't, you know, have those degrees. That is until now. How do you feel? Feel good. His daughter, Margaret Quinlivan, explains her family surprised him this past Father's Day. We just put the cap and gown on him. He didn't know why. And, we, and then my, my brother presented him with a diploma and read it. And he was very happy. The family using a national program called Operation Recognition, which allows World War II, Korea, and Vietnam veterans to earn high school diplomas if they left school without graduating. Margaret says it was pretty easy to complete the process. And based on Joe's reaction, well worth it. I was surprised and I was glad, you know, so it was nice, you know. Education and the Catholic faith have always been pillars of the Quinlivan family. Several of Joe's kids even became Catholic school teachers, making this honor even more special. Looking at his diploma, he just kept saying he never thought he would really graduate high school. And it was just a, a nice moment for him because he made sure all of us graduated high school and he wanted all of us to go to, on to college and to have an easier and better life. Joe proving you're never too old to receive your high school diploma. In Chief's Head Bay, Emily Druby, Currents News. Finally tonight, a new mystery surrounds an icon of the Blessed Virgin Mary. <laughs> Parishioners singing at St. Simeon Melchi Catholic Church in Windsor, Canada because the Marian image is producing streams of liquid. So much liquid that trays are being used to capture it all. It was first put on display earlier this month. The church's pastor believes the sacred oil is seeping from the icon. Parishioners are saying the oil has the scent of roses and flowers. They believe they're witnessing a miracle, but the pastor adds that before the church can agree, further study is needed. That is Currents News. I'm Michelle Powers. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.